Meeting is now called to order. Chrissy, would you please call the roll? Calling the roll, Mr. Jones? Here. Ms. Conwell? Here. Ms. Brown? Here. Mr. Schron? Here. Mr. Miller? Here. We have a quorum. All right. Chrissy, has anyone signed in for public comment? No, Mr. Chair, no one has signed in. All right. Can we have a motion to approve our minutes from the May 20th meeting? So moved. Second. Moved by Councilman Schron, seconded by Councilman mm -hmm. Miller. All in favor say aye. Aye. The minutes are approved. We have one item on our, res on our agenda today, uh, a resolution for the adoption network. And Chrissy, if you would read this resolution into the record. Resolution 2015-0113, a resolution making an award and requisition number 32388 to Adoption Network Cleveland in the amount not to exceed $749,000 for permanency supportive services for the period 4-1-2015 through 3-31-2017, authorizing the county executive to execute the contract and all other documents consistent with said award in this resolution and declaring the necessity that this resolution become immediately effective. And if you would like to speak to this item. Yes. Uh, can you hear me now? Let me start a little bit. If again. you would, just to say your name. <laughs> Daphne Kelker, Division of Children and Family Services, and we're re rec requesting you award a contract to Adoption Network Cleveland. This item was submitted RFP, which closed on January 28th, and Adoption Network Cleveland um, was the only vendor to submit a, a proposal. The services are for permanency supportive services, which supports um, youth between the ages of 14 to 18 years old, which is our most vulnerable population. The services is like a wraparound service for the kids. It provides mentoring, um, peer support. Um, there's also a production, I call it a production, they're called digital me's, where the child does like a, um, I want to say like a video or something, which they present themselves to um, potentially uh, adoptive parents. Um, the, the peer groups, um, the goal is to, to um, promote uh, permanency, whether it be through adoption or through the mentoring program. Finished? OK. Any, any okay. questions from the committee? Councilwoman. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, you mentioned that they were the only vendor to submit. How was the uh, RFP advertised? Was it? Yes. Okay. We went through all of the proper OPD um, procurement process. And because I'm relatively new, can you just enlighten me a little bit more on that process? Okay. Um, it's advertised in the paper. Okay. Uh, we offer an opportunity for potential providers to come in. We discussed the services that we were requesting. We also discussed the expected deliverables from the um, program. Now we did have, I think there were six providers show up for the pre-bid conference. Okay. This is the same, this is our, this would be also be our second contract with ANC. And again, they were the only vendors to submit a bid. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Councilwoman. Um, you spoke about mentoring as well as uh, adoption procedures. Is there a breakdown that you could provide this committee with um, the dollar amounts that went toward the mentoring and um, the, adop the adoptions? No, I don't. The actual, the goal is for 25 um, kids to work for them to work with 25 kids per year. We've averaged 133 kids. We do have monthly reporting. Um, that the, every provider we contract with submits monthly reporting and we compare that to the deliverables. The one unfortunate thing, and it's not unique with ANC, most of our contracts that we have that we request mentoring, that is very difficult for them to satisfy that objective to the maximum. What was our goal? 33? 33. That's okay. Tammy Wagner for DCFS. Um, so with mentoring with Adoption Network Cleveland, they also work with Big Brothers Big Sisters as a part of um, the uh, Fostering Connections group. So we have a grant from the state that also works on a mentoring program. Big Brothers Big Sisters works more in, um, with the youth around employment issues 
ANC works more with the youth around permanency, forever families, just having an adult, a positive adult in their life. There's also a small program with uh, Cleveland State University. It is the black alumni group, and there's, they're very small. They were only able to work with a couple kids. All of the programs came together under ANC to provide mentoring. Right now, they're working with about 33 youth that they've been able to sustain a mentor with. Um, but their goal, they actually had a goal with um, our agency of 300. Um, and it's, it's a very ambitious goal. So it's just been a real challenge for them. But we can certainly look at the dollar breakdown for you if that's helpful. Um, that's just one component of this program. The 749, that's for <clears throat> two years. Is that some administrative cost in that? Certainly. It would be administrative cost. It would be digital means. They also do, um, they go through the, the records and find adults within the children's lives that have been influential or maybe could provide um, support for them. They, um, right, they work with post-adoptive children and their parents. They run um, groups. They run individual counseling sessions. They help children tell their stories. They have a peer youth group which goes out um, as a panel, and they'll talk about their experiences, both at the local level and at the state level, when there's um, legislation or lobbying opportunities. Um, so they, they really work with the children all the way through um, the, the moment they become available for adoption and even after they get adopted um, to just be a, an advocate for those kids and for their stories. They were real um, proponents of making sure that the birth certificates were released um, for children recently so that they could get their records. Um, so they've done a lot of work with our kids around telling their story, getting their word out there, um, doing the digital me's, which are really just the kids speaking um, electronically about who they are, um, that they're available for adoption, and here's you know their story. In the age range? Of the over 14, anything over 14. Okay, but what's the age range for children to be adopted? Well, children are available to be adopted anytime they're free legally, so we can get permanent custody on any range child. This program is for children over the age of 14. Okay. They're the hardest to get adopted. Okay, and I believe um, back in um, 2011 or 2012, we had some of us on this committee had asked to visit, um, to be taken uh, to the adoption place to, you know, to see how it's run or whatever. Could a tour be set up for that? Oh, I'm sure. Betsy Norris is the director of Adoption Network Cleveland. I'm sure she'd be more than happy to have anybody come visit. OK. Thank you. And, and we'll have Levine coordinate sure. that. She's been coordinating, coordinating all of our tours and engagements, so we'll have her do that. Uh, Councilman Strong. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, so if, I, if I'm. Just understanding the math, I think you said roughly 30 placements, is that what you? They're not placements, they're, they're mentoring matches. So finding an adult that will um, be a forever adult in that child's life. So they're not placements per se, that's just an adult that's mentoring that child. And that again is just one component of the program. Okay, so that's, what's, <laughs> what's the objective of the, the mentoring? Ultimately is it to, For every to find child. An, adult, an adoption? for every child to have a permanent connection, whether that's through adoption or through mentoring, just to have an adult in their life, somebody to have Thanksgiving dinner with, somebody to call when they're in trouble, somebody to call when they want advice, just somebody to be there for them. So it's a permanent connection. Okay, so from 14 to 18, mm -hmm. it's not something that we think realistically is going to result in, a, in an actual adoption? We certainly always hope that, but that's... No, I understand that. Yeah. Yeah, I understand that's a hope, but what's, what's your... Give me your place. Give me the adoptions that, that have taken place out of the thirty mentors on an annual basis. Do we have one? Do we have twenty nine? Yeah, I mean, I can certainly get to the adoption numbers over that age, but that's not the goal of that particular program to get adoptions. It is to find a mentor. So they're not going in mentoring in the hopes of adoption. They're going in in the hopes of mentoring a youth. Um, to, be, to be that support for that youth. They're not licensed adoptive parents. That's a completely separate program for those youth. Okay. So the this A, uh, A and C, uh, what other things do they do other than this age group, 14 to 18? So they provide post-adoption services. They provided post-adoption supportive services in the last eight months to 486 children. 
Um, they provide post-adoption services to the parents of those children um, and run support groups for both the adults and the teens, and they also do them individually by men and women. They've done that to 216 adults. Um, they provide adoption navigators, which are those who um, walk through the adoption process. So they're going to go through the case records. They're going to look for adults in the child's life. They also run a helpline. They've done that for 294 children. They also prep children for what they call the Get Real group. That's the teen advocate group, so they can tell their story. Um, they've done that for 97 children. Um, and they have done the digital means, which we talked about, for another 20 children, and they have 129 more children being prepped right now for digital means. But none of these children would fall under the 14 to 18 category. These are all 14 to 18. Well, I it's, thought, it, it's not I thought, a program that they run through consecutive, consecutively. Some of the kids can venture off. They may need this piece of it. Um, they, some of them may need the mentoring more, but the other services that she, right. that she um, listed that may be more important. Some they still work with the kids that are adopted already and the family. Right. So this isn't um, every, not every child gets every part of this service. Some may already have a mentor. Some may already have an identified adoptive family. Some may already be adopted um, and they're coming back for post adoption services. What, what, what age group does AD, ANC uh, service? A adoption Network Cleveland services everything from zero to adult. Um, we contract with them for this service for our older youth because they're the most difficult to find a forever family. Mm -hmm. So we went out and looked for some additional supports for that, and that's what they've been doing. Okay, so for purposes of this service, their name would sound like it's a little bit of a misnomer because if you're saying the objective is not adoption and yet their name is adoption, no, it the, sounds, sounds the objection for mentoring is not adoption. Certainly, when they do adoption navigators, that's their goal. So, the adoption navigators working with 294 youth are looking for adoptive families, but mentoring is a separate component within that same program. Mm -hmm. So, they're doing all kinds of different activities. Their, their goal is permanency for kids, whether that's adoption, whether that's mentoring, whether that's just having an adult in their life to stay connected to. So it's, it's roughly $10,000 per year for this mentoring per child. Well, men, again, it, mentoring isn't the only thing that's being purchased in the contract. It, they're purchasing adoption navigation. They're purchasing post-adoption services. And we're purchasing all of these things within that contract. Oh, within the 795 or 96, what, what, what percentage is, is admin versus deliverable? Uh, I can get that breakdown for you. I don't have that here. And uh, uh, then whatever services they're providing, it's, it's roughly, if I'm just taking out a normal admin cost out of that, uh, it leaves me with around $600,000. <laughs> Um, so, and if, if that's not the right number, I'm just using it for discussion purposes because it makes the math pretty easy for me, my simple method to hear. It means that, that each one of these uh, children would be at around $10,000 per year is what the county is investing. If in. you're only looking at the mentoring children. But that's Whatever, a, uh, yeah. you said there's 30 being serviced, I thought. In mentoring, in the mentoring program. So that's, again, just one component. In the post-adoption part of the program, there's 486 children being served. Oh, okay. All and right. the adoption navigators, there's 294 children being served. All so okay. we also listed a threshold. That's why you're saying that the 25 or the 30, the threshold was initially to meet the goal was 25, and they have exceeded it, not by much, but, um, and I think you're also confusing with the fact of the, the um, finalization of an adoption. Is, are you pulling that in there too? No, I'm, I'm just trying to work with, with what, what the cost benefit, the, what, what is the county getting through this company? Uh, and if it's been on there, then, then I'm asking a whole series of questions about the success mm -hmm. uh, that we've achieved uh, under the last contract. And if we had four other companies that were competing, uh, that at least showed up to compete, and they didn't, put it on, they didn't respond to the RP. Um, I'm just always curious as to when the same firm ends up with a business. Uh, is, the, is what they achieved under the last contract your definition of success? I would say yes. The and what is, is your definition of success then? Children having a forever permanent connection, whatever that looks like for that child. Okay, so we can go back and look at the last contract, and now you can respond to me and tell me how many have that permanent connection out of the, the folks that were serviced, the kids that were serviced in the last contract. 
I'm sure we could get that data. Thank you. Councilman Miller. Mr. Chairman, uh, how many how many children are currently in this uh, 14 to 18 year old age range that are in county custody? I would give you a rough estimate. We have over 600 children available for adoption. Um, the largest portion of that are children over that age range, so it's going to be roughly 50% or about 300, but I can get you the exact numbers. And uh, typically, uh, in a given year, how many children do we get added into that group, and uh, and how many do we get uh, placed into successful adoptions? So again, I have to give you just rough numbers. We take into custody um, around 20 children each month. Um, a very small percentage of that goes into permanent custody. We finalized 138 adoptions last year. So um, you know, but I can get your exact numbers if you want it by month. And uh, of the 138 adoptions finalized last year, how many of those were in that 14 to 18 year old range and how many of them were younger? I'd have to get you that number. I don't have that. And uh, <clears throat> what work is being done to uh, to sync up this program with the various programs that are out there trying to serve the uh, the the youth that are uh, over eighteen and aging out of foster care. Well, I'm, adoption network will stay with um, a young person and even adults past adoption, so there's no age limit. Um, Typically, our children stay with us until they're 18 or until they graduate um, high school, whichever comes last, as long as they're actively engaged in their education. So Adoption Network will stay with them post-adoption, post-18. Um, they don't close out a child just because they're out of custody. Their services are available to the general public. As far as other programs or other services that work post-adoption, I don't know that there is a coordinated effort to bring all of that together. Um, we certainly need to start looking at um, doing some more of that because there is legislation pending that is mandating us to work with children post-graduation um, between 18 and 21. So we are actually actively looking now to gather all of the available services for that age range. Uh, could we get more children permanently adopted if we had more money? Or is it not a matter of money, and, right. and that we're uh, th that we're uh, finding as many adoptive parents as uh, as are out there and available, and and uh, coming pretty close to uh, uh, making as many connections as are out there. You know, Councilman, I wish I could tell you money would solve it, but money's not going to solve that issue. Um, you know, it, it is. Recruiting of foster um, families who are interested in adopting is something that we're always <coughs> actively working on. Um, it is about finding the right family for each child. Um, there are certainly um, things that we're working on in our recruitment department to be more creative, to try to you know, change um, you know, the way we advertise or the way we go out and recruit for families. We're constantly looking at that. I can't tell you there's not families out there that haven't been found, because as, as, as long as we have a child, there's a family out there that hasn't been found. Every child, I believe, has a family. Um, but it is, it is a struggle finding the right family for the right child. That's why we work the, with uh, organizations like Adoption Network, because they have contacts and resources through the work that, we do, that they do that we don't have. Um, we work with all of our sister organizations. Our children are um, put on a listing that is all throughout the state, so anybody can look up and see our kids and see their pictures and hear their stories. Um, we all work with each other trying to find right matches for, fam for our kids, and um, it is something we're always working on. So money is not the issue. How often uh, do mentors then become permanent adoptive parents? I can't give you a statistic. I can tell you that we always hope that once you get to know a child and you build a relationship with a child that you're going to want to stay in that child's life. 
um, hopefully through adoption, but if not, through that permanent connection. Um, you know, that's always our goal, but uh, the reality of it is, is we want a child to have somebody they can rely upon. We hope it's legally, um, but if not, we want them in their life in whatever way they can be. And suppose that, uh, suppose that a couple are mentoring a, a child and, and, uh, and they decide that they want to go forward with adoption. Uh, about how long does it take to become licensed as an adoptive parent? And, and could you explain uh, briefly what the process is? So there's a home study that takes place where uh, one of the workers will come out, they'll interview the parents, they'll review the home, they have to have a fire inspection, they have to have physicals. Um, they also then go to training, which is a series of uh, training classes that we offer at our organization. Those are done over a three-month time period. Um, so if they had all their documentation, if their fingerprints check out, if the fire inspection's good, if the housing inspection's good, if all of that lines up and everything goes well, they could be licensed and available for adoption within six months. I have no further questions. Thank you. Councilwoman Conwell. I have just one quick, uh, you answered one of my questions, but has the county always utilized ANC? Uh, no, we haven't always utilized them. We have for the past couple of years. We've had different relationships with them over the years um, because their services have expanded and, and changed. Um, they have done a lot of work with us in the past around teen <coughs> support and youth groups. So for that service, we've had a lot of work with them. They also did adoption navigation in a different way because we have a grant with Wendy's Wonderful Kids, um, and they provide us a couple adoption navigators as well through a separate grant. Um, so they have done some of that similar work for us in the past. So we've had different relationships with them, but this particular one, this is only our second contract. So prior to that, how did the county... Uh, handle uh, the adoptions? Well, we did a, a lot of it on our own. We also have separate adoption contracts. So a family who's been identified to adopt can pick whichever agency they want to be licensed through or have their home study done through. And then we will work with that individual adoption agency to get that finalized. So they can identify that. We'll do an, uh, an individual contract with that provider and, and do it through that process. So there's lots of private providers. Mo most of our placement providers who do fostering also do the adoption home studies, and so we'll work with them as well. So your Beach Brooks, your Bell Fairs, they also do that process, and so we'll work with them on adoptions as well. So have you found that it's been cost effective for the county to work with um, ANC? I think the gamut of services that ANC provides for us is really hard to, to be replicated anywhere else. They really do run the gamut between finding families and doing post-adoption services that it's, it's hard to find somebody else who does it kind of all in one stop shop. Um, it is a place where our kids go and feel safe and uh, feel supported all throughout the process. So it's, you know, I feel it's a very valuable resource. I think we've seen good results from them. Okay. And I know this was a, a thing in the past uh, in regards to how many because when we think of, and I just think of the general public, when we think of Adoption Network, we think that, you know, it's providing adoptions, we're getting kids uh, placed with families. And so I just think that's uh, an avenue. That's why I think the tour or the sure. connection is really important for us to personally to understand. So um, when we hear questions in regards to, well, you know, why are you spending this much money and right. kids aren't getting adopted? Because Understood. that's... That's always in the media. Understood. And their name doesn't fully represent all the work that they do either. Thank you. I remember back in 2011, when you just taken office, and Adoption Network held a, <coughs> an event at 30th and Euclid Avenue in the uh, church. And uh, so they've been connected with the county weather in this particular right. contract for quite, a, quite some time. In fact, uh, Commissioner Hagen was a, mm. a powerful advocate for uh, for our for our children uh, over, over the course of his yeah term. they they provided a lot of support for us over the years not always contractually but um, uh, and a lot of support. Uh, one question I have is our contract is dated April one, and since they've had the previous contract, 
Uh, was there any interruption of service? Have they been delivering service um, without um, being paid until this comes forward? So there has been an interruption in service. Um, they know that they can't get paid if there's no contract in place. Um, but there are other avenues of resources that they have from grants that they would continue services with the youth area had, but they haven't started again with any new referrals until this is signed. Okay. All right. Councilwoman. In regards to the dates for the contract, they don't seem to be lining up with our with our budget. Why is that? Do you know? Our budget cycle is uh, we're going to go into our two year biennial budget, and this goes beyond to 2017. Um, initially, we had created an um, amendment for Adoption Network Cleveland. The goal actually was to have this completed by then, and it wasn't. So the start date was changed to 4 1 2015. And of course, the budget, um, the money is only guaranteed through 15 for now. Okay. Because we're getting ready to. You know, it just kind of seems funny that it's coming before our budget cycle. So we realize, and all of our contracts also have the out if ever if necessary. Okay. Okay. So for me to, to recap, we, we, we really have 600 children that, that the county is responsible for. We have over 1,800 children that the 18. county is responsible for. We have over 600 that are free for adoption. <clears throat> 1,800. Mm -hmm. And those are the children we have custody of. We actually have 22,000 that we look at each year. Wow. So the 22,000 represents children who have aged out already? or Who touch us through referrals, through allegations that we investigate, that we work with, that we provide services to. 22,000. And of those 22,000, 1,800 have um, come into our custody. Correct. And we are responsible for all their needs. Correct. And the 600, tell me what that number was again. Children who are free for adoption. So we have severed their parental rights, and we're looking for an adoptive family for them. So of the 1,800, 600 are available for adoption. Correct. And of the 600, 300 are age 14 to 18. Uh, yeah, that's a rough guesstimate. I have to get rough. you the exact numbers. Right. Mm -hmm. 300. So in our contract today deals with the, those 300. Correct. Those 300. Plus those who have been adopted or aged out, they'll continue to work with them. Okay. I, I just think, you know, I'm 47 years old, and I was just asking my father for help today. <laughs> so this, this is an important aspect of their life when we don't find an adopted uh, parent or parents to, to take them in. Uh, and we're always that, looking for adoptive parents. Right. Right. So I want to come back to the youth mentoring, uh, youth mentoring service. Uh, can you give me a, a, a sense, and you, you've touched on it some, but just what this mentor actually does in the life of that child? You know, they do all kinds of things. They, okay. After school activities, they'll take them to a game. They'll hang out with them, help them with homework. They'll, you know, they, some of them, you know, go to the Indians games together. They, they just, they're just with them, you know. So some, it might be an every Saturday thing. Every child's different. Every need is different. Um, you know, it depends what that youth needs and where they're at. And um, the big brother, big sisters are working more on the career path, so they're helping them write their resumes and how to dress for an interview and how to practice interviewing. They might even open a few doors for them to get them some interviews for jobs. Um, so it all depends on where that youth is at and what their need is. Um, but honestly, it's about having somebody to call when you need some advice, having somebody to um, go to a game with, to have a dinner with. And that's for the course of their life. It's not a two-year period. Absolutely. You, you and we hope that go, that continues for the rest of their life. Right, because you just can't go come in and out of a child's exactly. life. Exactly. So are they being, I don't know if this is a, are they being paid to do this work? So the mentors are not paid directly to do this work. It is a volunteer program. The, the work goes into recruiting the mentors, to holding the events that recruit the mentors, to running the support groups that, you know, bring the mentors in and teach them what they're looking for them, to running the background checks on the mentors, things like that. And what are the number of mentors again? So we currently have um, 30 that are active, and we have another 57 that are pending. So they're looking for 57 more mentors. Okay. Uh, Councilwoman. On to the chair's point, has it ever been considered to give possibly stipends considered for the mentors 
just to cover the cost of maybe when they go out to activity. Because when you're dealing with kids, they don't want to just come sit at your house. No, they don't. They, they want to go and do fun things. Um, you know, we've talked on and off about that over the years. And one of the issues that comes directly from the youth is they don't want somebody paid to play with them. And, and so when, they, when, according to the youth, they're very strong in their panel. They have said, um, if I know you're getting paid to hang with me, then I really don't want you in my life. I want you in my life because you want to be in my life. Um, so we have not gone that, down that road to incentives. I, th- I think it's all in how you put it with the kids. If they're being reimbursed for, you know, maybe some expensive... And they could think of the gamut. They they could say, you know, if we want to go to Cedar Point, which is very costly, right. you know, things of that nature, maybe just to start having the discussions sure, with them. Sure, yeah, we can certainly open that up. And just so you're aware, too, we get a, we're very fortunate to get donations from the Indians and the Browns and, you know, different organizations have tickets, and um, we're always able to share that with them as well. So. And another question in regards to the... Um, the county employees is there a conflict uh, for the county employees in DCFS to be mentors? There is, and that's a, that that is against our um, policy, so they're not able to be in that role. Okay, and that's just for DCFS. Correct. So certainly that doesn't apply to the council or employment, family services, or employment or, and family okay. services. Okay, didn't know that because you guys have a lot of staff in there. That's true. <laughs> Last, our council, our. This council has uh, worked, has repealed our college savings account program. Yes. It, the objective was to increase the college participation of the residents of this county. And that um, objective is still at least one that I, I, I hope to fill, and I believe many others feel the same way on council. Uh, when I see nine, 14 to 18 year olds, to me, that's the target range not so much of the kindergartners, but the target range of how you take a baseline of how many are going to college and what can we do to move the needle. What right. efforts do um, do you make, if, if any, in this area of, of guiding these children, 14 to 18, towards college? So um, we, we are proud that we have a graduation rate that is better than um, the Cleveland Municipal School District's okay. graduation rate. So we graduate over 70% of our youth who are eligible to graduate, and a third of them go on to college or technical school. Um, we also provide a college-bound stipend. What is that number again? It's 30%. Okay. Um, and then we provide a college-bound stipend, which is equal to $20 a day, um, so roughly 600 a month for the youth that go to college. Um, as long as they're enrolled full-time and they're participating in their educational plan, um, they'll receive that college stipend up until they're 21. Um, so those, that's the support that we provide. We also pay for anything that they need to get set up. So we'll, you know, get their basics for their dorm. We'll make sure that they get their laptops, um, their software supplies, things like that, so they can do their college work. Um, we'll help them with rent. We can do three months of rent for them through TANF dollars. Um, so we try in any way we can to, to support that effort. I, I'm brainstorming and visualizing a a, a program that again helps us increase college participation that has a collaboration around those who engage this population 14 to 18 uh, we have one again in closing the achievement gap that same target mm-hmm. range and there are many others who reach out to this group for various reasons right. um, some type of collaboration where again you take a baseline of where our children are and what can we do to uh, again help increase that uh, college participation. Well, I, I, uh, I'm just kind of throwing that out there to you. No, I appreciate that because you yeah. know the efforts for the 14 and 15 year olds for the YOU um, work programs were cut this year. Mm-hmm. So um, that you know is something that really helps our youth start to gain employment experience and build resumes. Um, so that is a deficit in our county. And while we got a little money um, in the county to support that, it certainly isn't going to cover the majority of the kids who need that. So we're certainly looking for ways to enhance right. that in any way we can. Organizations like College Now exactly. will help children remain in and college. And College Now works mm-hmm. with all of these youth. We have a, um, a real nice partnership with them where they'll come in and actually help them do their college applications and get their financial aid in place. See. So a collaboration of all those entities working with the target population could actually be a place where dollars are redirected 
towards creating what makes sense around, again, moving that needle. Yeah, and I think you've all heard a presentation on a place for me um, when Kate Lodge came. We have a partnership with the YWCA and um, the Casey Foundation as well as um, Frontline Services, so to end homelessness for youth. And part of that is a passport program um, in which they actually match their savings. So they're also getting a savings account set up and they're doing matching dollars for them for the activities when they participate in work, study, or training or any of that kind of stuff. Okay. Councilman Miller. You said you have 30 active members and 57 pending. Uh, are the 57 pending, are these people you have identified that are going through a process or are they, they people that we're looking for but have not identified yet? So those are actually 57 youth that are pending for mentors. They have 47 pending that are sitting in training right now. So they're going through uh, 47 adults going through orientation um, right now. So after orientation, then we'll figure out um, the match between the 47 adults and the 57 youth because not all are going to be perfect matches for each other. So it's a matter of um, how many of the 47 stay after orientation and want to um, continue with the program, and then how many of them um, we can match with the 57 youth that are waiting. And uh, why is the number of mentors that we're looking for not more like 300? I, I wish I had that answer. If I had that answer, we, we wouldn't have a problem. But um, it, it's, it, you know, I, I, I don't have an answer. Um, adults mentoring youth just isn't something that's, very enticing. Takes time, takes money, takes effort, takes training. Um, uh, so, you know. so, so if we could find more, we absolutely we'd do. Okay, fine. that's why we're working with Big Brothers Big Sisters as well because they're the largest mentoring program out there. So, and uh, you said that seventy percent graduate from the high school, mm -hmm. and uh, and the thirty percent go to college. Is is uh, is that 30% of the 70% who graduate or 30% of the, of the total group? 30% of the 70 that graduated. Understood. Okay. You know, to that point, I, I heard like maybe 75 years ago, 100 years ago, the churches, <laughs> the churches were actually responsible for adoption within the community. And, that's it. and then the government has stepped in now, but that's where, is that accurate or is that a... I, I wasn't around 75 years ago, yeah, but that's right. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. <laughs> but um, you know, we did have one church, one child many years ago that helped with adoption um, and just helped with wraparound services for our youth. And unfortunately, that program didn't last. We are now looking at another program, although we haven't started it, um, which is a roundtable initiative where the churches do come together around a particular child, and they look. Um, within um, their network of who maybe can provide support or adopt that child because their goal is adoption and those open, it's called an open table forum. Um, we haven't started that yet. We're just in the beginning stages of looking at that program, but it is certainly an untapped resource. Okay. Well, that's it, the untapped resource. Okay. Uh, was there another question from the committee? Councilman? In regards to, uh, through the chair, in regards to the adoptions, do we just open that up for Northeast Ohio or are they eligible no, we do adoptions all over the state. We've even done a couple foreign adoptions. Mm -hmm. Our children are actually online, their faces, their stories. And so anybody who searches through those adoption um, links can look at our kids and hear their stories. And if they're interested, we'll work with whatever state they're in, whatever country they're in, to get the home study process completed. And, and what, is the, what is the statistic for them being adopted more here versus out of state or... I couldn't tell you specifically. I can get that for you, but it's way, well over 90% stay in Ohio. It's a very small percentage that leave our state. I was just worried about, you know, of course we want the kid to go to a family, but uh, those that are adopted out or further out, how does the county handle uh, post-adoptive? Uh, then we'll work with that county and that state. So we'll, we'll connect with that child welfare agency in that particular community and once the adoption is finalized, they take over the post-adoption services. Until that point, we will still fly out and visit our children, link them to services, and do all of those, all of that work. Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, Councilman. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I just want to make sense of the numbers again because I 
took some notes and maybe I didn't write it down clearly. We have 600 in custody. And then there was a number of 486 that you mentioned. What was that? For? We have 1,800 children in custody. 600, 600 that are available, available for, for adoption. adoption. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the 486? Uh, 486 are the number of post-adoption support that they're providing. So children who've already been adopted that okay. they're providing support to. Providing support to. And then um, you mentioned the children are eligible to be seen on the internet, but it looks like we only produce 20 digital me's. So digital me's are more than just a picture and a, and a bio. They're actually the child talking. Um, and so maybe the child's at the playground and they're playing in the playground and they're talking to the reporter and telling their story. And so those are um, uh, like five minute videos and those are done for um, our hardest to place children. And, and not every child wants to do that. So it's a volunteer process. Voluntarily. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that was my other question. How are they chosen yeah. to do? Okay, all right. That was Similar good. to like Wendy's Wonderful Kids, if you remember, the TV used to spot light certain children every week on a Wednesday, um, and they would tell their story and videograph the child. We now do that on a continuous basis through the digital means. Thank you. Thank you so much. Any further questions from the committee? On, on April, uh, since the contract really goes back to April 1, and uh, there's been an interruption in service. What, what was the reason for the delay in the contract coming before us? <laughs> blink, blink. <laughs> Crickets. I have some personnel issues that I have to deal with. Okay. Okay. All right. I, again, any further questions? If not, I'm going to make a motion that we move this resolution to the full council and um, considering our time, we're going to move, uh, make it under second reading suspension. We appreciate that. Thank you. You're welcome. Right. Moved and seconded by Councilman Miller. Thank you. All in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Mr. Chair, can we yes. ask that they uh, send all the oh. responses to mm -hmm. our Absolutely. before it goes for a final vote? Sure. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Is there any miscellaneous business? Yes. Councilman. I'm, I'm wondering if, if anybody, uh, anybody from the administration, I, I don't think we have the right people here today, uh, but uh, if anybody from the administration could tell us what the status is of our efforts to uh, recruit a person as Director of Health and Human Services. Councilman, I, can you repeat that? I don't think I... Yes, my, uh, my question is if we can get an update as to uh, the status of the administration's efforts to uh, recruit someone as our next director of health and human services. I, I certainly don't have anything to add uh, that, or in response to that, but on behalf of the law department who does represent both the council and the administration, uh, if it pleases the body, I will forward the inquiry to the staff and, and, and let the uh, administrative participants know that, that council is obviously uh, curious and, and, and obviously uh, wants to know what's going on in that position and then uh, hopefully be able to respond back certainly by the next HHS meeting. All right. Thank you. Chrissy, has anyone signed in for public comment? No, Mr. Chair, no one has signed in. All right, if nothing else holds our attention this, um, you know, before I, we adjourn, uh, our director is here. It's, it's a pleasure to see. I don't know if you had any comments or anything you'd like to. It's not necessary, but you can just, just if you want it. Yeah. Hi, good afternoon. Always an opportunity to speak to the council. Um, I, good to see you again, Chair yes. and Councilman and others that I've met. Uh, I am available at any time of your convenience to present to you on any and all programs and issues that you may have concerns about with Children and Family Services. Um, in two days, I will be here two months. Um, and it's going very well. A lot of things are, I would love to share and talk to you about it at your convenience, if you'd like. All right. Well, thank you. And we did meet, oh, it's probably been a month and a half early in. We had a good conversation. I, I was very impressed with, 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 I believe, the vision and direction that you're bringing to the department. And I look forward to working with you, over, you. These, over these years. 
Mr. Chairman, I just want to add that I appreciate you sending around the briefing reports, and, and I do I do read those and, and find that that helpful in, in knowing what's happening in the department. You're welcome, Councilman. I was going to ask one quick uh, update on the uh, the roof over there. Oh, it's fixed. Okay. We have air conditioning even. We're almost oh, in the 21st okay. century. Because the smell was terrible for the employees over there when I was right. there. So I just wanted to check on the employees out there. We were almost going to shorts and t-shirt day because it was so bad. All right. Thank you very Thank you. much. Appreciate it. Well, again, if nothing holds our attention, this meeting is adjourned. Thank you.